the March 20th meeting, 2017, of the Auburn Board of Selectmen. And um, uh, first on the agenda tonight, we have an executive session. Uh, it's at 7 o'clock. Is there a uh, motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we go into executive session in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Section A2, to deliberate upon matters which, if done in open meeting, could have a detrimental effect on the position of the town regarding strategy with respect to non-union contracts, the town manager, to come out of executive session and reconvene an open meeting. Second. Okay, there's a motion made and a second on a roll call vote. Mr. Berthium. Aye. Mr. Carpenter. Yes. Mrs. Brotherman. Yes. Mrs. Goodrich. Yes. And the chairman votes yes. Executive session. We are back from executive session. Uh, this again is the uh, March 20th, 2017 meeting of the Auburn Board of Selectmen. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Is there anybody else in the meeting recording tonight? Our representative from the Worcester Telegram and Gazette. And uh, being no others, we, can we stand salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First on the agenda, we uh, I understand we have no public comment, so uh, we will get started right into um, Board of Selectmen general items. Our first one will be the outdoor entertainment license at Sheldon's Harley Davidson. Events on the 2017 calendar at 914 Southbridge in Auburn. Is there a representative from? Okay. Um, all right. Okay, um, well then I guess what we'll do is we will... Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to hold it till the end of the meeting in case they show up. Okay, second. All right, so motion been made and second to hold uh, item 7A to the end of the meeting so that we have a representative from uh, Sheldon's here. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We go to 7B, the transient vendor license. Big T's Jerky House. It's a mobile food truck. And is there a representative? Please, come forward. Here, you can come over here. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Would you uh, identify yourself and give us a little background as to uh, what you plan to do? Yes, uh, my name is Scott Tuft. I'm the owner of Big T's Jerky House, a barbecue catering. We also have a food vending uh, trailer. Um, Halligan said, Steve from Halligan said, contacted us a few weeks ago and asked if we'd uh, come out on Thursday nights during the summer. I guess between five and seven, he has some customers uh, that would like to have food. And uh, so basically, we are going to serve barbecue food there. Okay. And um, is there a specific time that you've uh, got here? You said between five yeah, and. The exact times. I think, it's, I think it's sometime around five to seven, seven thirty ish. Okay. I'm just going through here just to uh, see if it actually does tell us exactly uh, what the time frame is going to be. I know we have the certificate of liability insurance, uh, the DCG notice, but it uh, doesn't give us a, a specific time here. Open as scheduled. Um, and I guess that's kind of wide open for us. Um, is there any way we could be more specific for the application? And uh, you said you had talked to Halligans and they yes. want to provide food out there. Yeah, we won't be out there till after five, five o'clock. We'll be there about 4.30 to set up, but we won't, because we're someplace else earlier in the day. So I won't, it's from five to like 7.30, I think you need us there. Yeah. Okay, so can we uh, apply that to the, the contract, sure. uh, to your application rather? And so it'll be five till 7.30. 30, yes. And then uh, you'll break down from yes. there. Okay. Jim, can I yes. Question regarding this is good, Rich. The, just the time that we're on. Um, he asked for a weekly, which I, you know, I support the five to seven thirty weekly. You said that's a Thursday night. Yes. But it also says here a fundraiser in June. So, so we certainly don't want to tie your hands to a um, five to seven thirty if you expect that to be a different of a, um, time. So, could you tell us a little bit about the event in June? Yes, I guess there are two Saturdays that uh, he's hosting uh, during the day. Um, my event coordinator handles all the times and dates. I believe it's June 24th is a Saturday, and there's one other date, I think in August, that's just a Saturday afternoon. 
Okay. And let's see. This you've got for a weekly bike night and fundraiser in June, you've got. And um, we don't see anything in here for August. And uh, the other one is open as scheduled. So that leaves us kind of open. So we should have some sort of a specific time period. Um, if you could get the, um, um, the schedule for the Thursdays uh, and also for uh, June and for August for those two and for the application. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, I know it's early and we haven't asked many questions yet, but I, I'd like to see us take this as um, as two separate issues and um, look tonight at the where he has more information on it look tonight to the 5 to 7 30 Thursday evening events and then ask the applicant to come before this board with additional information so that we have a better understanding of um, what the event is how many people there will be you know like we treat it like any other um, larger event we don't know if there'll be you know police deal details needed which would be on the on the um, on the, uh, no, it would be on Halligan's, not this gentleman. But I think we we need a little more information on these Saturday if, events, if they're all-day events, especially if they um, tie in with some other proposed events that we have. Okay. And uh, along with that, uh, the 5 to 7.30 Thursdays, starting when till ending when? Um, it's pretty much a wide open application. Yeah, my so we was, I guess Eileen from the Board of Health suggested I go for the transient license because it has more flexibility. Okay. And that's the reason why uh, we chose it. Instead of doing the day-to-day, -day, the actual ind individual dates, she asked us to go for the transient license because it gave us more flexibility on the time and the okay. schedule calendar. Yes, Mrs. Goodrich. Mr. Chairman, might we hear from Mrs. Coyle on this, just if she has any additional information? Ms. Jacobson, um, can we have her come forward, please? Sorry. Just the difference with the transient license and, and our concerns with um, times and crowds and tied into other events. Sure, good evening. Um, so the uh, Big T's Jerky House um, has come uh, and has been working with Eileen um, over the past uh, several weeks and has also attended uh, DCG. Um, they have been working on getting um, the, uh, the paperwork um, to us um, and I think something as early as even today uh, came in regarding uh, the events. So it's our understanding that the um, the Thursday nights was uh, kind of uh, an, an event in itself. So the Thursday nights throughout the summertime. Um, and then the two fundraisers, I know that I've uh, seen some talk about it, but I don't know the exact dates. Um, I can check with Eileen and report back to the board as to um, if we have any uh, times on those. Um, we were working on getting the, uh, the details um, for the actual permitting of the food. Um, I I think that we had referred um, Big T's over to the um, uh, Selectman's office and I know um, Shannon had been uh, speaking with them as to um, them getting a uh, transient vendor license just because they are a mobile food uh, vendor. Um, I think at this time, and please correct me if I'm wrong, sir, um, at this time you were only looking to be at um, yes. at uh, Halligan's, so it was um, for these specific events. Now, if the board does not feel that transient vendor is um, is needed because he's not going, you know, around the town, he's only going to be at one location. Obviously, you know that's um, uh, you know that's for your um, consideration. Um, but with all mobile food vending, we typically recommend a, a transient vendor just because it gives them the option if they want to, you know, go to a, another establishment, it gives them a little bit more um, leeway um, for their business. Well, I guess I could understand uh, that. Uh, are you saying that this transient vendor uh, license would be good for those, um, also for those other two uh, events in June and August, so they would have not to come back here and it would be covered underneath that license? Yeah, so I... It, it's and they, he would report back to you that there was a specific date that you were going to be out there other than the Thursdays, 5 to 7.30? Right, so we can um, we can work with the vendor um, if, if you're comfortable with that. Um, for 
for the other two um, events, the Saturday events. Um, you know, if it, they're going to be all day events, or it's my understanding they have fundraisers. Um, but I. D yeah, we would have to we would have to report back to the board. But um, I'm assuming that you probably have concerns if they're you know all night shindigs and you know uh, there's close proximity to residential neighbors um, you know behind uh, the establishment. So obviously we'd want to have an understanding that if this is a daytime event, you know if it's. 12 to 5, that's a little bit different than, you know, 5 to midnight. <laughs> so. Mr. Berth, you now get uh, to you, Mr. Goodwatch. Point of clarification. Um, so, if we granted this transient license, and let's say that um, Mrs. Pappas uh, wanted um, Big T's to be at, say, the 4th of July event, mm -hmm. um, the transient would automatically allow them to go there or would they come back to the board and say you know we don't have to go through the DCG and everything again but we want to be at the 4th of July event um, how, how does that work um, I, I think it, it's probably up to the board. Um, we are looking to, uh, typically when we license uh, a mobile food vendor, we're looking for um, specifics on where they're going to be. This is uh, this has been presented to us for just this establishment, for just these times. Um, and, you know, certainly we are, we, we would consider that. Um, you know, license th licensing them for the um, the uh, food portion of it. Um, whether or not you want to give consideration um, for the vendor to be able to, you know, um, be at other events, obviously town events. Um, you know, it certainly uh, could be considered. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I don't. I, I, I guess this is twofold. I, I don't have an issue with with um, this gentleman having a transient vendor license because that's that's what he needs to conduct business. I I guess more so for this board and um, through the town manager and and um, Mrs. Coyle's department. Um, the red flag to me is there could be potentially be larger events that may require an outdoor entertainment license or uh, you know other issues that need to be addressed by this board. I just want to make sure that um, that this is only allowing this truck to sell on this property or around town. I, I had a transient vendor license for years. It didn't have anything to do with the business. Um, but the red flag to me, like I said, is this is this is a concern that there are events down there that may need an um, outdoor and entertainment license and that this is triggering. And I believe he, that would be something that the uh, you know the owner of the other establishment yeah, would require want, us to come back and see us. I just want to make sure that we're like we're all on the same page here that we need to to be aware if there are okay. Mrs. Brother, going on. Mrs. Brotherton. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Taft, do you have um, any idea of like the start date of these weekly? Yeah, I think it's uh, May 27th. I'm sorry, sir? It's in May, May 27th. May 27th. It's right around May, uh, May 27th, I believe. Thank you. thank you. I can get you guys all the exact dates. Okay. Um, the, excuse so me. Yep. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. These are the bike legs they had down at Halligan's last year? I believe so. Okay. All right. Uh, and you know, I can see here that you've also um, had a chance to meet with the DCG. Yes. And you're um, familiar with their requirements. Yes. Uh, the applicant shall obtain all the necessary permits and inspections from the town departments, boards, and or commissions. And the applicant must ensure that the staff is serve safe and allergen certified. Yes. So you will be willing to work with the uh, Board of Health on this and yes. with uh, Mrs. Coyle's office to uh, take care of all this. Yes. Mrs. Coyle. Sure. Um, just to um, maybe relay some of the, um, the the concerns or the red flags, perhaps um, you can approve it with some conditions. Um, if 
uh, the scope of what um, Mr. Taft is offering, if he's going to be anywhere else um, or doing any other events, perhaps he notifies the Board of Health and we can bring that to the Board, uh, Board of Selectmen, um, for, you know, if, if there's concerns that we need to work out. Um, that way it just kind of gives a, a layer to make sure that communication is maintained um, with the vendor in our department. Is there anything else? Yes. Um, and this is probably not for me as much as it is for the Board of Health, but um, when you come to um, Halligan's, is the food being cooked outside being brought inside to be eaten, or is the food being cooked outside and, and served outside? Um, brought hot, kept in warmers, and served. Outside? Yeah. I have a food commissary in Worcester that is fully licensed. The food's all prepared there. It's kept in warmers. It's brought to the facility because barbecue is that's how it is. It's, it's kept warm, and then we put it in rolls and put it over rice or macaroni and cheese or whatever. Okay. Has anybody got anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mrs. Goodrich. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the license provided that all applicable requirements of the state and town and any of its departments, boards, and commissions have been fulfilled. Said license is subject to the conditions stated upon it. Failure to comply, <coughs> excuse me, with any and all the conditions shall invalidate the license and render it null and void with the conditions of the DCG to be placed on it. Also, that the license is valid until 7.30 p.m on any evening unless um, unless he re receives other um, approval and that if the um, if the truck is to uh, be placed at any other location other than the Southbridge Street address that the Board of Health be notified. Second. Could you repeat that? No, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's my motion. Well, I'm going to have Sharon do that in a minute. <laughs> Have you got that, Sharon? Uh, I, if Mrs. Goodrich could just repeat the part, sure. it's 7.30. Okay, so, uh, so with the conditions of the DCG yep. to be placed on the license, and also with an end time of the license to be 7.30 p.m. on any day, and that if the um, vendor moves his, his truck to any other location other than the uh, Southbridge Street location that they notify the Board of Health. Thank you. Okay. And there's a second? Uh, no, um, mm -hmm. but there was a second. second. Okay. okay. So the motion's been made and seconded. Just, under, right? just under discussion. Yes. I, you know, I didn't put a stat time on it because I don't really have a concern if he's, you know, selling something at 11 a.m. But, um, you know, on Thursdays, if he's selling after 7.30, it could create outdoor noise, et cetera. And that's why I respectfully request that the board put a 7.30 p.m. limit on the license. Okay. Is there anything further? Mr. Taft, have you got anything further? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good luck, Mr. Taft. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Down. <laughs> <laughs> You're a barbecue fan, are you? I so am. <laughs> okay, can we uh, move up item 8A, town manager item for tax abatement and exemption advisory group recommendation? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? And Ms. Jacobson. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the assistant town manager in a minute. But just as a reminder, this uh, we had come to the board last fall with a recommendation to put together a group to look at the um, to look at the different structures of tax abatement and what we could do to potentially um, further increase the ability to help our residents, uh, particularly those of, of low income or um, veterans or seniors. So the group was put together and Ed uh, chaired that group and I'm going to turn to him and he can just give you an update as to where they are. They did meet several times during the winter and have a recommendation for the, for the board to consider for town meeting. Thank you, Julie. Uh, members of the board, um, I've asked Cindy to come to present to you the recommendations we made. Uh, she'll present those in summary form. Uh, but I'd like to thank the, those who participated in uh, two meetings that we had, where we focused primarily on income, assets, age, 
and um, potential deferrals to offer some relief to the residents of our community, primarily the elderly uh, component of our community. <clears throat> Given that, I'd like to publicly thank uh, the members of the committee for their hard work and dedication and the input that they brought to the table in consideration for the recommendation that we're going to give to you, to you tonight, which is also part of the warrant uh, that will go to town meeting uh, because it does require a vote of town meeting to uh, implement this. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank the following members, uh, Ian Weston, Cheryl Westerman, Cindy Cosgrove, uh, Kim Holstrom, she was a finance committee representative. Uh, Carrie Schiebler, who is on the board of the uh, Auburn Senior Center. <clears throat> Larry Corbin, a veterans agent. And Lionel Berthium, a member of the Board of Selectmen, who uh, represented your interests at the table as well. So with that, Cindy, I'd like you to just come join us. And I believe the recommendations are part of your packet tonight. So these are all the statutory exemptions that we could address that would hopefully uh, allow some relief to the elder population as well as some of our veterans here in town. Um, I think the recommendations we made uh, addresses some issues. Certainly without knowing what the financial impact was going to be, we would, not, we, we would be willing to reassess and address these once again once we determine what the financial impact is going to be. So I think there's a consideration or a consensus that we could loosen up some of these uh, requirements in the future, but we thought it wouldn't be prudent to do that without realizing what impact it's going to have in terms of uh, financially meeting those obligations. So with that, Cindy, if you could just briefly. Okay. Um, and I'd like to reiterate Ed's thanks to all the people who did work on this. I think we came up with some great ideas. Um, it's, it's a difficult thing when you're in my office dealing with this every day and trying to find ways for relief that are cost effective for the town as well. Um, so we reviewed, there are four different motions that we're bringing forward. Um, the first motion is involving the property tax deferrals. Um, these are programs that rather than exempt or excuse taxes, allow for payment of taxes to be suspended um, for a period of time. In the case of the temporary hardship deferral, applicants have the ability to defer taxes for three years, and then they're responsible for a repayment plan. Um, for seniors, the deferral is until the sale of their house or is due up upon their demise. Um, basically, the motion that we're proposing was to reduce the interest rate on these property tax deferrals for both temporary hardship exemptions under Clause 18A, which is currently at 8%, and the senior hardship deferral under Clause 41A, which is currently 5%, and we'd like to bring them both down to 4%. Um, this will make a single interest rate for both deferral clauses. It streamlines the administration for the treasurer collector, and it will make the repayment plans more affordable for those trying to recover from their financial difficulties. Um, for senior citizen, there were two mo motions that we're, we're proposing from the work group. Um, the first one is to decrease the age of eligibility from 68 down to 67 for the 41C exemptions. Um, it's part of a gradual process that we started a few years ago. Um, once again, very conservative, but bringing it a little closer to the age of retirement. Um, the second part of that was also to increase the gross receipts for married applicants uh, to $30,000 and the whole estate for married applicants to $50,000. It makes the limit for the married applicants a little closer proportionately to what we did with the limits for the single applicants a few years ago when we, when we had originally visited these exemptions. Um, the final category of exemptions we addressed were for disabled veterans and veterans who are deployed overseas. 
Um, for the disabled veterans that fall under the clauses 22, 22A, 22B, 22C, D, E, and F, these are our disabled veterans. We would like to reduce the residency requirement for the veterans in the state from five years down to one year. Um, right now, if somebody with a severe disability who is a veteran moves into the town of Auburn, they have to wait five years to get any, any tax relief. So this will reduce that waiting period. Um, we also voted to propose a motion to accept the provisions of Clause 56, which allows an exemption of the real and personal property, so that would be real estate and motor vehicle excise, um, assessed to Massachusetts National Guardmen and reservists who have been deployed overseas. And what we had proposed, because we have to set an amount for that, is 50% of their taxes for the year. Um, and those are basically the changes that we put forward. There was one amendment to one of the motions that was in the original package, and I believe it was handed out. And that was just um, what I had forgotten to do was change the, when I brought the interest rate down to 4%, I had just addressed the hardship and I had not addressed the um, 41A senior exemptions. And what we'd like to do is keep those the same. Do you know how much um, involvement there's going to be with the town? Are there going to be a lot of people involved in this program? Uh, just from off the top to you, are you aware of many? We had quite a, f we've had a few married couples who missed the exemption by very small amounts. They seem to be the biggest problem area right now. Um, for the senior exemption, what happens is they qualify one year. Um, the next year they get a tiny little raise in something and it literally removes them from the program because we're not keeping up with the rate of inflation. So this, this will grant relief. I mean, even if it's only four or five people, it's substantial to those four or five people. By lowering the age, we really have no way of knowing what the impact is, is on that. So that's why we've been very conservative and only gone down the one year. And you feel that, uh, well, I guess through Mr. Kasanovich, I guess um, you feel that this is the first year we are going to try that as a, uh, you know, an experimental and then uh, go from there for maybe next year to uh, take a look at it again and see uh, um, how, what the results are? We'll look at the financial impact as a result of the change of age to 67 and then make a determination whether we want to revisit that in ensuing years. Um, what we will do from a budgetary standpoint, um, these financial impacts affect our overlay account. Uh, so we have made a recommendation in the FY18 budget to increase our overlay by a value of $25,000 to accommodate the additional need that may be uh, granted as a result of these changes. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? Have, have, you, questions? have you got anything else, Eddie? No, I think that covers and everything Cindy? that the, uh, the group had discussed and recommended. Okay. And Cindy, anything else from you? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Now these motions here in front of us are for us to uh, approve tonight, or this, these are going to town meeting on... Uh... So um, we would be looking for an approval based upon the recommendation coming from the group to the board and based upon your vote, that would be the warrant article that would then end up for town meeting at the annual town meeting in May. Okay. All right. Um, I guess before we make the motion, how do we? Um, well, is it going to be? On, uh, will these be on the town meeting warrant for um, our special town meeting coming now? Will that be in the annual town meeting? Be the annual town. The annual town meeting. Okay. Um, I don't know, I guess because they we have motions here in front of us, but it doesn't specify uh, what article or how it should be identified on the warrant. Um, should we wait till our next meeting to uh, identify that so that we know exactly what this board is recommended? Mr. Chairman, these are on the warrant. We put them on the warrant because the warrant opened and closed. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, subject to your vote, um, if you approve these as recommended, 
amended, then I see. already on the warrant and no change will be required. Okay, great. All right. Everybody understand that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Articles 20. Yeah. 20. Twenty. Okay, so articles twenty, articles twenty through twenty-three. Okay, that's right. We do have that uh, with us tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I guess what we'll do is I'll entertain a motion. We can take these uh, as one, if you wish, or uh, we can take them individually, whichever you. Mrs. Goodrich. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we authorize the town administration to place as um, presented in our packet articles 20 through 23 on the May town meeting warrant as presented. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to uh, recommend. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. Now we'll go back to um, all right, we'll go back to item seven C. It'll be the May second, two thousand seventeen annual town meeting warrant. Vote to approve the subject to final review by town council. Um, I believe we did have one uh, amendment to this. Sharon handed that out tonight uh, prior to us uh, to the meeting. Uh, can you bring us up to date on what the, uh, the change was on that uh, warrant? There was a change in the articles. Mm -hmm. Uh, through the chair. Art Article 30 was an item we had put on as a placeholder because we were still having some internal discussions about it and we did not uh, want to lose the opportunity when the warrant was open to put it on there. We're not prepared to move forward with it right now. We uh, may have to revise it a bit and potentially come back in with it in the fall. So we've just removed it from this article, uh, this warrant completely. Okay, so and Article 30 has been removed then? Correct. The, the original Article 30 was removed and um, in its place we uh, had put an article uh, related to pilots for solar facilities. Um, this article is similar to what we had done, I believe in 12, we did again in 2013. So you'll see a new Article 30. Yes. Uh, on the packet you had Friday, there was a different Article 30. This is the Article 30 okay. that's on there now that we are proposing okay. to, to keep. Um, we've had a couple of solar companies approach us that are doing projects in town on privately owned land. But under state law, there is the opportunity to negotiate a pilot, which is a payment in lieu of taxes agreement. We are, uh, each case has to be looked at individually as to whether we should or shouldn't go forward with that. Uh, we do have one that we would like to go forward with, we believe, but we don't have all of the details yet. But this would be a generic vote to allow us to meet with any potential solar company rather than having to lose the opportunity for a year and potentially lose revenues. Uh, we had done this, I believe, in 12 and again in 13 with the net metering credit agreements, which provided uh, the town manager with the authority to negotiate net metering credit agreements for solar because at that time, similar to what we're having now, a lot of companies were coming in and if we waited the entire year or six months, we would have lost the opportunity. So we do, um, we were able to negotiate some net metering credit agreements. This is a pilot agreement, which again, if we do that, the pilot, we've had one pilot agreement in the past, I believe it was signed in 2012. It did not go forward because the lease that the company was going to lease the land to put in the facility, the lease fell through. But uh, the solar credits, my understanding is they've become available once again, so we're probably going to see some more interest from companies. And again, we just want the flexibility to be able to look at it and make a determination as to whether the town is better served by having a pilot agreement than straight taxation as uh, personal equipment. Okay. Mr. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just for clarification, the, the um, warrant that was emailed to us last Friday that we would have um, read had a, an article that we're removing and the, the warrant before us tonight is the actual warrant article in its place. Correct. So our, our article 30 that was there Friday has been replaced with article 30 that's there today. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the um, May 2nd, 2017 annual town meeting warrant subject to final review by town council. Second. And there's a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Okay. No. 
Thank you. Um, being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. We have gift acceptances tonight. Um, let's see. We have one tonight from Andrea Maloney to the fire department gift account of $25. Mrs. Brotherton. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we accept with gratitude. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We have no proclamations in front of us tonight. Um, now we have a discussion on recognition of town employees and board and commission members for the Board of Selectmen policy. And I know that um, the subcommittee has been worked on this uh, pretty uh, diligently to uh, get this done. And I know that there were some questions come up by one individual who was unable to be here tonight. Um, Mrs. Goodrich. Mr. Chairman, I would, I, you know, this isn't a, quite an undertaking. I know it's something that the board approved, voted on, discussed, and approved. Um, you know, when it comes at a time where town administration is, is very busy with um, town meeting, um, et cetera, um, I would recommend the, that the um, chairman appoint a two-member subcommittee um, to get to work on this. Okay. Um. <coughs> And Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask that I be excused from being this appointment where I just served on a subcommittee with Mrs. Brotherton and did a lot of work on the okay. on the um, policies. All right. Um, I know that there's been a lot of work in it in our policy book. There has been uh, quite a bit of guideline put down on it so that uh, we can go by uh, those guidelines and uh, amend, uh, revise, whatever we want to do with those. Um, I know that uh, one of the things I hate worst is to be, uh, you know, put onto a board and not be there and not have the chance to say yes or no to it. But um, we can hold it till next yeah, Tuesday. Um, we have a meeting on next Tuesday, and uh, then at that time we can um, see where the subcommittee members are going to be. I think that'd be in fairness, so that it doesn't uh, it allows everybody to be here and say yay or nay to um, being part of that uh, subcommittee. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just would recommend that on the agenda it be listed as appointment of subcommittee to um, recognition. You really time. have had enough, haven't you? Yeah. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> I just want to be clear that we're going to be voting on it next Tuesday. Okay. Like, it's not a discussion, it's the, you know, chairman's appointment of subcommittee. Okay, so we'll, we'll table that item until... Um uh, our next meeting on uh, March 28th, just prior to town meeting. Right. Okay. All right. The next we have the announcement of the public meetings by the Worcester Regional Transit Authority. So I'll turn that over to Ms. Jenkins. Uh, thank you. We did receive through our representative on the WRTA board. Um, it had brought this to us, and I had also received an email. Uh, from the WRTA, all communities receive this, that they will be having, uh, that they're posting a schedule change, a proposed schedule change, and a proposed rate change. There's only one route here that affects um, Auburn, and I believe it was Route 22. Make sure I'm right. Uh, which was the service, I believe that's the service to the uh, I think that was a service to the Auburn Mall. Um, I'm going to double check on that before this evening is done. I'm having trouble reading it. Oh, okay. <laughs> the light uh, is the poor and I can't the, see it. The Route 22 I see is eliminate services on Saturdays. Yes. Uh, routes, uh, okay, yes, I'm pretty sure it was Route 22, and I believe it was proposed to eliminate service on Saturdays and not to the Auburn Mall, it was to the Auburn Industrial Park area. Um, okay. And I believe that was the correct yeah. route. Was it, Sharon? Yeah, it was, it was, thank you, it was, it was to the Industrial Park. The other routes that you see here that are proposed with any service changes did not affect the town of Auburn. Okay. Uh, the second part of this, which again, I apologize, this is the form that they sent us, it's very hard to see, but we have posted this, we've put it online, we put it on our website so people can see this. It's on the WR, uh, WRTA website as well. And they're showing the different dates of the meetings that will be held throughout their service 
region where the public can go and provide testimony. So this is not anything that's been done. It is a proposal, and the WRTA is holding public meetings to take input on it. So we just it's an informational piece. We wanted people to be aware of it. Okay. Um, well, the meeting locations I see right here are mostly in uh, the, we have Worcester, Webster. Um, again, Worcester, a couple. We have one in Northboro, uh, one in Southbridge and Spencer, and a couple in Millbury. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, and one out in Barry. So there are no meetings here in Auburn, but um, uh, there are some at the uh, Union Station and there's uh, the Worcester Senior Center in uh, Worcester. So there are some spaces where they're convenient to uh, get into. But uh, again, those are all on the WRTA website as well as the Auburn World. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mrs. Thank Goodrich. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to uh, speak on this. Um, you know, I've attended many, many meetings at CMRPC as well as the WRTA. And um, anyone who is affected by this change, even though it's a minor change on a Saturday, you know, we have a lot of residents who count on bus transportation to get to and from work. And if this affects you, go to these meetings. I've, I've attended these meetings. Get up, have your voice heard. And I've seen them actually, you know, if enough people speak up and say, I, I need this route, this is my livelihood. I've seen them change them, you know, and look at, look at other options. So if this affects you personally, you know, take this information off the website and attend the meeting. And I, um, I looked at this briefly, but a lot of times they will take written testimony as well if you send written testimony and just you know express how important it is this transportation is to your livelihood they do take that into consideration Thank you. And through the chair, if I can follow yes, up on please. that same vein, this appears to be when we looked at the route, proposed route change. The, again, the Auburn Industrial Park. So businesses yeah. in the Auburn Industrial Park yeah. may be affected by this if they do have employees that come in for certain shifts on a Saturday that rely on bus transportation. I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't believe this picked up anyone from Auburn. I believe it picked up people from other parts of the region, including the city, and brought them into Auburn. So it absolutely can affect someone's livelihood or that of, of a company. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, on uh, item 8C, this is the grant for CERT, and I'll turn it back over to Ms. Jacobs. Uh, through the chair, thank you very much. Uh, we have been notified again by MEMA, uh, Mass Emergency Management Association, that we have an opportunity under the 2016 SHSP slash CCP um, grant, which provides funds to various CERT organizations, which are our citizen emergency response teams. And we've been very grateful and fortunate to receive grant funding from CERT in the past. We've purchased radios. We've had work done on the radio tower to make uh, interoperability between our police, fire, DPW during emergencies, non-emergency events where we activate CERT. Here is another opportunity to apply for a 2016 grant. Uh, the grant is a competitive grant, but we are given a, a maximum amount on the grant. So the maximum amount based on our population that we could apply for is $3,500. So our grant uh, amount is probably $3,499.93. So <laughs> it's, it's right in there. So we're asking for a vote to accept the funds should we get approved for this. Uh, as many times we have a short turnaround on these, so we had to get the grant application in prior to coming in tonight, but if we get the funds, we want to make sure that you're aware that we have this. Um, and I want to thank Mark Moss, who's our Emergency Management Director, and Joe Chanette, who's been working with him on these grants and with us, and Eddie and myself. Um, we do get a lot of grants, and it is a lot of management of the grants, but it's well worth it. You know, we, we look at it and weigh the opportunities, and this is a great opportunity. It's, it's uh, in this particular case, getting batteries and getting a connector to the um, from the West Street Fire Station up to the landfill where the radio cert tower is. We want to activate that fiber optic line. So it's the activation of fiber optic line and batteries, I think 33 batteries for all of their handheld radios. So it's a, it's a great program, and hopefully our grant will be competitive and we'll get it. Terrific. Thank you. Okay, uh, under uh, eight D. Oh, I'm sorry. So, would you mind voting? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, vote to accept the funds. Yep. Should we get approval? I'm jumping ahead here. That's all. Um, is there a motion? Did you say so? Moved. Absolutely. 
Is there a second? Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to uh, vote on acceptance of the funds when received. Thank you. Not if, when. Uh, the motion has been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Now we go to 8D. And it's an early education grant through the community compact for $14,500. Right. This is just an informational item for your information. Um, if you recall, we had applied for the community compact through the state back in February of 16 and were awarded designation as a community compact for three best practices. One was a housing development of a housing plan, which is underway. We received a $25,000 grant for that. And um, very happy to say that actually the first meeting of the housing subcommittee is tomorrow uh, evening at 6 p.m. and Mrs. Brotherton uh, has been appointed to that committee as well as four other residents so we're excited to see that starting. The other component, the second one, was a best practice for economic development plan and that plan we received a $25,000 grant for and from the state and that plan is in draft form probably going to be done within a month maybe wow. six weeks at most. Uh, it, it looks very good and both of those will be incorporated into the master plan. The third best practice that we applied for was through the school department. We had reached out to the school superintendent when we learned of the community compact program and asked if they might be interested in applying for a best practice under education. And I think only 3% of the uh, community compact agreements that were signed in the state had an education component to it. And Auburn was approved for one. So it has taken a little bit of time uh, to secure the grant, but I have to say that the school department did an awesome job. They just did a great job putting together a program. The grant actually, then I applied for the grant because it had to come from me, but the grant will go to the school department. The gist of it is it's a three-pronged approach to preparing uh, preschoolers for entry into kindergarten. And one of it is to enhance their um, their exposure to the school beforehand so by the time they get there they're more comfortable. Another one was to maybe do a social event or a couple of social events to invite the parents to bring the children uh, when they are you know, preschool four or, or potentially even three to get them used to the building and to see their teachers and understand where they're going to be. And then there was a third piece of it too that involved training uh, for both daycare providers and off-site providers as well as uh, members of the school department. And we were grateful we asked for a program came to $14,500 and they awarded $14,500. Awesome. So this will go into effect. We do have a year and a half to spend the funds but I believe the superintendent and her team are looking to implement most of it this coming summer. So it's a great opportunity for early education. We know how important that is. Um, so I just, it's here for an, an informational purposes for you to know that that is, that rounds out the third best practice that we receive three out of three and we receive three grants. So we're grateful. What's great about this is the community compact that we signed there with the state. Uh, you've been proactive already. A lot of these programs have already been put in place. And so this is assistance to what you already have in place. And we say thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we thank the state too. It's uh, it, This one was a little bit more challenging because there were only 3% in the state that had applied so the state really put a lot of work into trying to identify funds that met our needs. So it was very individualized. We got a tremendous uh, feedback from the uh, Department of Education. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Good job. Okay. We have no tabled items. We have no member items. Has anybody got anything from the board? Just when we come back to Sheldon's so upcoming. Okay. Uh, have we got any pu no public comments tonight? I guess uh, so. Just before we go out, I guess we will ask: Is there anybody from Sheldon's here tonight to uh, talk on this uh, schedule for the uh, upcoming uh, on the summer? Being none, I guess, uh, Mrs. Goodrich. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we continue this without taking any action. But um, I, there's. Um, there's an issue with the application I just want to ask about. Um, it, it gives a letter that says, dear resident, as an abutter, blah, blah, blah. But um, I don't, generally we receive the list of abutters who were notified. I'm not seeing this in the packet. I just would like some type of insurance and see who was notified before we approve um, potentially a whole year's worth of licenses and which, you know, with an attendance range of 100 to 300 people. So if we could have that for that meeting, and I'm not sure, Mr. Chairman, if you prefer to 
do this um, before town meeting I, or at our next regular meeting. I think um, our next so regular our, meeting would be. Our next regular meeting will probably be the time to be doing that. Uh, our, next, that our next, our next meeting will be. I, mean, it's, I believe it's after the dates of the events that they're seeking approval for. So. Oh, okay. So we want to have. I believe you meeting, have to see if we can get them down there yeah, for March 28th prior to. Yeah, there were a the few days meeting. before the next one. I believe this one, the first two weekends in April. So. Okay. So if you could contact them and well, see if they yeah. can be here. If they can't, then uh, they have no events for uh, until our next meeting. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I would recommend 6 p.m. This could potentially take some time in discussion with some of the previous issues and also. Um, you know, I would like um, that list of abutters notified that this hearing has been continued to the location at the high school at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. Is that going to be sufficient time? Because the town meeting is at 7. I know that sometimes we have a problem with getting quorum, but uh, you figure an hour would be sufficient time. I don't think there'll be anything else on the uh, I, I don't believe there will be. At this point, we don't have any other uh, items. Um, it doesn't mean it wouldn't. Okay. Something like yeah. that. But I think something that comes out will probably be short notice anyway. So, all right, then we'll make it for 6 o'clock or about 28th. Uh, we'll see if we can't get them somebody here, a representative here, so that we can discuss it. So, we will hold that until our next meeting on the 28th. Uh, Chair, uh, yes. I just want to add uh, one thing, if I may. The town clerk mentioned uh, this evening that uh, we are in need of town meeting members. There are There is an election coming up, and there are quite a few town meeting member seats that are uh, expiring. So the town clerk wanted to put out a, a public plea um, for those town meeting members, current town meeting members, to get your papers in if you are hoping to keep the seat. And that's for all precincts? She said she had vacancies in every precinct. Every precinct, okay. Mm -hmm. So it, whether you're uh, a town, current town meeting member and you want to continue, you still need to get your papers in. And if you're interested in serving for the first time, which would be wonderful, you need to get your papers in. So we told her that we would make that mention. She has been working with the media to try to get the word out uh, to the public. We've done a lot of posting, but a good opportunity here to bring that up. Terrific. Thank you. Does anybody got anything else? Well, I guess item 13 has come up. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you and good night. Thank you.